MFS has been around for a long time, since 1924. In fact, we founded the first mutual fund in the United States. Um, our sole purpose at MFS, and it, it actually dates back to 1924, is to allocate capital responsibly and to create long-term value for our investors. When, when we first launched the President's Council um, as a team, and we actually had to be more concrete in thinking about what the ask was. And, and very importantly, I also had to think about how does this pertain to the people we serve, our clients. The President's Council was different than any other team I've sat on, uh, primarily because the ask was very different. Um, we were being asked to really step up as enterprise leaders to be part of a strategic vision for MFS. What was really clear was that we could not do this on our own. And I think um, when we uh, partnered with Corn Ferry to come in and help us, the, the idea of team dynamics and the norms and the importance of the team versus simply the work was a whole new dynamic that introduced, I think it actually um, was exciting and inspiring because we sort of thought we knew what team and collaboration was because it was so embedded in, in how we work together. So we always had that base. But the reality of it was we really didn't know what high performing teams look like. With any uh, effective teams, it's important to have a structure that allows you to be successful. And so there were some simple tools that we used in working with Corn Ferry on, on how to think about um, actually starting the team um, at the beginning of its journey um, in order for it to um, really reap the rewards that was the vision. The moment I, I realized the team had, had grabbed the mantle and had taken the commitment was, you know, I think back and it was one meeting where I really went into that meeting still not sure that they, each and every one of them was committed to moving this thing forward. And I really honestly thought to myself, there was no way unless they really took it, this thing wasn't going to happen. And so it was at that meeting where the, both they saw me physically and verbally let go. And I just said, you guys got to take this one. This decision is yours. Because if you're not into it, if you don't buy into where we need to go with this thing, I can't do this by myself. And I can't spend more time convincing you. And the coolest thing that I saw was how quickly they all took the mantle. I assumed I could say, you know, this is what we want and, you know, you should get it. Um, but the process of level setting, the, the, the process of understanding that if you don't have every single person on the team understanding where you need them to be, and there's only half the team gets it, there's no way you're getting to the best outcome. I think the other thing that was a huge, huge coaching moment for me, and that was to trust the process and to let things play out which we talk about a lot today, which is to go slow in order to go faster. I guess I have to admit, the transformation, um, as much as it's been for the team, it's been for me. I saw dynamics of people understanding that the team ultimately was more important than any single one of us. The results that we got to started to not only accelerate, but it actually, the capturing what felt so overwhelming for the team in the beginning started to feel very real. They were actually able, they felt as a team that they could get at this work. Um, the first and foremost is never to underestimate um, the importance of getting the foundation of the team dynamics right. Once I started to recognize that if, again, I could fill the gap um, through a process um, that this work starts moving out um, in a way that I would not have expected in the past. And really trusting that as a leader versus jumping to the old habits of the outcomes and the results versus taking the time in the beginning to set that foundation so that, again, your agenda moves a lot faster 
when they when they own it and take it.